Well, Adelaide Oval hasn't rocked like this since the Rolling Stones played a gig here. I was at the stadium. One of my greatest moments supporting the club was being there. There is no question that God has smiled on the city of churches. What a sparkling autumnal day. Till this day, I still get people coming up to me just thanking us for bringing them joy on, on that day. There will not be a bigger event for Adelaide United. I was in the stadium. I was at uh, Adelaide Oval with my scarf on. Adelaide United versus Western Sydney Wanderers. This is grand final day, fireworks guaranteed. For Adelaide to be hosting its first National League grand final for decades and first A-League grand final, the size of the crowd just, just told that story. Another sellout crowd, 55,000 people. Ball of a state by Backers, there could be an air. Tablo Sanchez, that's it! They've done it! I was in the stands. I was in the stands and I, and I know that I, I don't mind saying I actually cried at the, the final whistle. Even now, working at Channel 7, you know, when you're looking for that shot you might be after of Goodwin or Isaias or whoever, all the other vision's there. More than 50,000 poured through the gates, a match for the history books. And you see the marches through the city, you see reporters in the thick of it doing live crosses. I mean, and I think when the people who came up with the concept of Adelaide United, the people's team, they would have envisioned a day like 2016. Adelaide City played in the National Soccer League for many, many years. One of the, the powerhouses of Australian football in the old NSL. They're an institution really here in Adelaide, formed many, many years ago by migrants who came from Italy. West Adelaide, that was their nemesis. It was the Greek back club, Italians versus the Greeks. You gotta love it. There was a realisation that there, there were these teams, that there was this Adelaide City and, and West Adelaide from general soccer fans, but you'd, you'd find that the vast majority of people there on match day were people from the Italian and the Greek communities. And the NSL was starting to, to suffer. For 2003-2004 season, just four weeks, I think it was, before the NSL was due to kick off, Adelaide City pulled out of the league. The budgets not allow us to stay in the National League competition and uh, the board uh, uh, unanimously made that decision. The draw had already been made, the squad had already been signed up. Christ, what's going to happen from here? Yeah, just a minute, I'll ring, I'll ring the bank manager now to bring the money so you can see it. West Adelaide had pulled out a couple of seasons earlier. It, it was just awful to think of a National Soccer League season without an Adelaide club. The football community here came together to say, well, we need a representative from Adelaide. We need a side in the National League. Word started filtering through that the South Australian Federation were looking to put in a submission to somehow get a team running for this NSL season, which was just four weeks away. Less than two weeks after Adelaide City Force quit the NSL, South Australia has a new team chasing the affections of the fans. I reckon it was only a, probably about five or six weeks from the time we started training to, to the first game. Within a very short amount of time, it was incredible how they came up with this team, they came up with the name, colours. It was easy to connect yourself with a team which had such a prominent colour for South Australia and you don't get much more of a United, a name to unite the masses than United. The idea of United within the club is, is obvious to ensure that uh, there is unity within the soccer community and that's the responsibility of the new club. There was a lot of fractions in South Australian football, depending on what background you were, and this sort of united that whole community. You heard, oh, you know, there might be a decent crowd. I don't think anyone was too sure of, of what was going to happen. We were in the change room prior to the game, and they said, oh, the game is going to be uh, put back 15 minutes. It's going to be delayed a little while. And everyone's going, why? He goes, oh, because there's a stack load of people outside that can't get in yet. And we go, what do you mean can't get in? And they said, no, it's full house. I got to the stadium and I could not believe the amount of, it was chock-a-block. There were people outside who couldn't get in. Well, that night I thought, yep, here we go. Now, now football is in town. You couldn't script it better. You know, you can bring out all the cliches in the world, and it did. It was, it was perfect. For a club 
to come out of nowhere, to get a sellout crowd in its first game, to unify the fans, it suddenly gave you a sense of hope that, okay, this is great for Adelaide, this is great for Australia. Hi, how are you excited about today? Very. Very? Very excited. I think it was at a time where Australian football needed to take that next step. After several false starts, the Australian Soccer Association today launched the Code's new national competition. To see the support that Adelaide United got was amazing. For me, coming back to Adelaide United in the, in the A-League, I was really excited that I was going to be a part of that and what they had created in literally the 12 months before. Congratulations, you made it. I trained for 18 months with a personal trainer just to stay fit through that period of time. Unfortunately, one day I got the tap on the shoulder from Cosy and he goes, come on, let's go have a coffee. The Hyundai A-League has arrived and it's arrived in force in Newcastle. There's a really a bit mark, recently retired, somewhat surprisingly, I might say. Um, yeah, a lot of people always bring that up, you know, first goal scorer in the A-League. The cross comes in and it is in. We had decent players, but uh, an incredible appetite to win. A lot of Adelaide-based players. And here's a chance, getting in with Storm, and I do not believe it! We're playing for our home state, so there was that real togetherness. How they trained is how they played. We used to get the shit kicked out of us at training. During that season, whenever we weren't doing well in the game or things weren't going our way, we pretty much always just started a scrap. Rex, early shot. We played for each other, we fought for each other. Ultimately, we win, win a Premier's play in the first year. The big surprise was the appointment of John Cosmina as coach. He left Adelaide to seek his soccer fortune 23 years ago and was on the verge of turning his back on the game. You know, I'd, I'd had enough of the direction the game was taking in this country. Um, I'd had enough of the, the amateurish behaviour, I guess, of administrators, present company accepted. John Cosmina, he was different. Passionate. Loves his football. Cosmina may now have to defer his studies of natural therapies. I don't know if you've spoken to John, but I think he was about to become a hippie or something and then decided to get back into soccer. I think he would have made a better hippie, Johnny. Anyway, <laughs> I love him. When I was going down a different path, I was going to move to Coffs Harbour. I was studying naturopathy, acupuncture and massage and all that sort of thing. I was going to go and walk around barefooted and grow my hair again. Dodd, for the shot. He had a way of just making sure that you were super, super competitive, not just at training, but in every game. At that time, a very, very hard man, I would say. I didn't really, to be honest, love the physical stuff, and he would pretty clearly tell me that I was weak or I was too soft or I didn't tackle hard enough and all these kinds of things. I wanted him to play for the state. We wanted people that that understood the, the local mentality. Because that was important in terms of connecting with the community. Yeah, Kevin Musker and John Cosbina having a real set to on the sideline. The ball came on that silly uh, plastic matting that they used to have in the early days. Musker came in and gave Cosy a hip and shoulder and <laughs> Cosy went flying and all of a sudden it just bloody just took off. So I wasn't going to take a back step. I never did when I played, so um, it did annoy me a little bit. The referees indicate there'll be a referee's report forthcoming. Do you anticipate much fallout from this? No, oh, look, if there is, you live with it, don't you? I don't like being assaulted. The FFA, for whatever reason, I think they had it out to get him, but he was giving us free publicity, which you could not buy. And with the musket situation and so many different things going on with Johnny, I think people would rather see him get upset than someone just being politically correct at a boring press conference that let's take one week at a time, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'll be honest with you, I didn't have a lot of respect for the A-League administration because none of them were football people. And John Cosmina has finally made his way through to a title decider. I really do think there was a bias towards the Eastern States. I know what it was like. People used to take the mickey out of Adelaide. It was seen as a country bumpkin town. 
So that was all part of what we tried to sell and how we built that and created and stoked that fire in our bellies. It's Melbourne Victory versus Adelaide United. The title of Champions of Australia is the prize. That's a shot of John Cosmeda, the Adelaide United coach, of course. He's got a seat up in the stand courtesy of a five-game suspension for saying one or two things he shouldn't do to referee Matthew Breeze. Obviously, the result was an absolute shocker for us. What a way to finish it at Telstra Dome. And it's six for the victory. We played our grand final the week before. By the time we got to Melbourne the week after, we were cooked. Well, a lot of things happened after that grand final. After a lot of thought and soul searching, I'm resigning my position as head coach of Adelaide United. Ross Aloisi has been dumped as captain. He didn't really want to step down, but the board had agreed that uh, we thought, in light of what's transpired, that we'd, we'd like to start fresh. Cosmina's assistant, Aurelia Vidmar, was appointed interim coach. You always think that you're ready, but you're not. <laughs> so, you know, you're learning as, uh, as you get gaining more experience and everyone, once they start, that's exactly how it is. Vidmar will take charge of the Reds for their Asian Champions League campaign starting on March the 7th. Yep, no worries, fine. No, no dramas about it, that's great. In the 2007 ACL, Adelaide finished third in its group and Aurelio Vidmar says it was a steep learning curve for his side, one which will stand them in good stead for the 08 campaign. We went into the competition knowing absolutely nothing and I think the fans as well didn't know really too much about it and they came out and they supported us. We'd expect much of the same again uh, come March. I thought it was exciting. I really enjoyed playing Asian Champions League. Loved the travel, the camaraderie amongst the players. Hi, Travis Dodd, captain of the Adelaide United Football Club. For the inside word on our door die clash in the Asian Champions League, stay tuned to Channel 7 News. That was a really bizarre time, I, I think, and I say that because we didn't know what to expect. Maybe that was where I learned to adapt and to, to be able to get the best out of myself, which I then took into playing in Asia. And even going to like somewhere like Pohang, you know, we used to say, oh, how much money would it take for you to come and play here? It was so foreign to us. And then to think like I went and lived there for four years and thought like what what were we what, what were we even thinking like you know where it is no nah, Iran Iraq <laughs> somewhere I don't know or at <laughs> <laughs> what is it now two thirty in the morning still haven't got out outside of the airport so uh, hopefully we'll be in bed soon to go through that rigorous travelling schedule and still be able to get results was a massive effort. It seemed really hard. Maybe coming from a goalkeeper, I don't have to move around too much, but we were just on a momentum streak and we were just getting to one ground to the other and it just felt like we just kept winning. It was a massive time and to this day, I think it was probably talked about in the street a lot more than any other period at Adelaide United. Eight months since they started this campaign or thereabouts in March earlier this year, it's hard to believe Adelaide have got through to the showpiece match, the final. Things are happening automatically, you know, everyone's getting on well with each other. Generally, when it's like that, you, you know, you're getting good results. The first leg of the 2008 Asian Champions League final didn't go the way of Adelaide United. It's a 3-0 loss. Mike, you called the action, watched the action as you've done through Adelaide's campaign so far. What did you make of it? Well, they were taught a football lesson and harps, there's no doubt about that. Uh, the scoreline was uh, probably the right one. If you ask anyone that was involved in that, in that tournament, everyone's really proud of what, what we achieved. There's a lot of traveling, there's a lot of games in such a short period of time. This is the best. I wouldn't change this for the world. I'd rather have this again next year. And I know the players would. I found it enjoyable and, and I love being part of it. We you know, achieved a lot more than anything that we would have imagined. We came up against teams that had five times or ten times the budget of what we had to achieve that to get to the final. I, I think that was uh, an incredible effort. There's too many people in this club with hidden agendas and that 4 nil result was because of that. Because of a pissant town, this club will never win anything. We got flogged by a Melbourne victory. You know, the place smelled a little bit, put it that way. No, I probably went a little bit over the top, but got my point across, I think. United's embattled coach brought in to explain to the board why he blasted his team, the club and the city of Adelaide in a fiery post-match press conference. Nick 
Bianco and Dario, they were having some issues at their workplace and they said, look, we're going to have to spend a bit more time looking after the workplace. Someone else is going to be the chairman. That chairman decided to, you know, start having meetings with the players, you know, giving them surveys, who they want for their football director, who they want for their doctor. And the players came up to me and said, hey, Vidi, this is what's happening and I didn't even know about it. I was trying to get a hold of the owners for weeks to put things straight. It just never happened. I took the opportunity if no one was listening, well, they're going to listen now. I want to be the coach, yes, but you need to work in a happy environment. And this was a very happy place until a few weeks ago. For the following week, it was just mayhem for me. Everybody wanted to talk to Aurelio Vidmar to find out. And needless to say, uh, Aurelio didn't want to talk to anyone. So I had to deal with it. So thanks again, guys. See all this grey hair? You did it. <laughs> Seeing him made that statement, we tried to play on words with a pissant town, so we did. We got ants, and and I didn't think Aurelio would go for it. Yeah, yeah I'd actually forgotten about that until you mentioned it. The old pissant, <laughs> you gotta love it. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2009 the Hyundai Champions, Melbourne. It stung, really stung. I mean, that red card, obviously, in the first half, Cristiano was really hard to take. I look back at that one, and that's the one that, that I was really gutted about. But then I think you get the monkey on your back because you've you've lost a couple now and you, know, you just can't seem to, to break that duck. You grow up in Adelaide, that's your club. For me, I remember being like 15, 16 with my best friend. We would always go to the games. We love the victory game. Melbourne try and play the offside trap and it's not too convincing. Dots When goals are scored, you get that like rush, that feeling, and it's just like I always wanted that to have a pathway finally to like play for my childhood club that like I've always loved and to finally have a girls team was pretty like special. The growing status of the Matildas on the world soccer stage contributed to the formation of the Australian Women's National League which kicks off this weekend with an eight team competition. Not to mention in that first season my idol was Di Aligic. I remember having a photo of like me and Di on my phone screen for like two years. Callum has it getting it wide here towards Di Aligic. As a Matildas group, we were always fighting to have a league. When the league formed and Adelaide United had a team, I just, I just had to be a part of it. To sort of live out my twilight years of my career in Adelaide, playing for Adelaide United was something that I didn't even think was ever going to happen for me. I'd gotten back from overseas in 2007 and, and there was this fantastic opportunity to play for Adelaide United, who I'm um, an Adelaide girl and, and they were my team and it was the unknown, but fabulous experience. Uh, it was tough. I mean, we had the, the highest streaks of losses, which was mentally really hard to deal with. I just remember like every weekend, you know, we'd get pumped and the highlight was actually going out with the girls and having a drink just to like, I guess in a way drown our sorrows, which was hard because I had so much pride playing for this club. It's no secret that the club did struggle a lot on the women's side in those early years. And, you know, I don't remember a lot of wins. You could tell that we weren't quite there yet, but I think through that, there was a lot of growth. 2013, I was signed. That was Ross Aloisi's first year. I still remember the moment I was told in the change rooms by Ross and I kind of tried to act cool and then I walked out and burst into tears because I was so excited. Just being around your home state, Highmarsh Stadium against victory, first goal, especially wearing the armband, it was a very special moment for me. One thing about Adelaide United, which I've always loved, is that, you know, if it's a choice between an interstate player or South Australian, they'll always look to invest in the South Australian and see them grow through that time. The diminutive Alex Chidiak gets the ball away to Sophia Huerta. Now we're at a point where Adelaide United is very much a competitive A-League women's team. Premierships, Asian Champions League, all that in the first two or three years, you sort of can only go downhill from there. When I first came, Adelaide United, in name, in character, in everything we did, we, we were united. Definitely we have to change something, especially our way of playing, but also maybe some, uh, maybe one, maybe two, maybe a little bit more, a few new players. Players have to handle it. 
and that's normal in Europe, but maybe it's not normal here. I think it just seemed to me a bit of a loss of identity of actually what the club possibly stands for or what the club is, is there for. A team for all South Australians. Oh, well done, Marcos Flores. Beats two challenges. Now fights on route. This would be a wonder goal! It was so many decisions that were making this adventure, this, this period of time, really sweet on the field, but really uncertain outside the field. Travis Dodd's manager declaring the coach is trying to drive the skipper away. Uh, there are always players in, in, the, in the changing room who are maybe not happy when they're not playing or maybe not for sure that they have a contract. Uh, just go on with it. My thought and my intention at the time was that, yeah, I'd see out my career in Adelaide. I said before I wanted to stay, but it hasn't happened and yeah, I'm disappointed, my family's disappointed. Trav was the heart and soul and flying down that wing, the captain, and, and had led the team really, really well. That was sort of, I wouldn't say a spiral, but that was sort of definitely a downturn. Nichols. Back to the Seven one in the roll. After suffering their worst ever loss in the club's history, the Reds are now in danger of having their worst ever start to a season. I think there were too many people that didn't understand what Adelaide United was all about. John Kazmina has only just arrived back on the scene and he doesn't like what he's seen so far. There were players in the club that were more concerned about just continuing their careers rather than actually fighting for what that badge on that shirt meant. You can say that's professional football, but not in Adelaide it's not. Rini, John Kosmina, Michael Valkanis, I think that happened all in one season. It is all over. And it used to be the benchmark of the A-League, I'll be honest with that. Every player wanted to come to this football club and play for Adelaide United. I think the main thing is football people need to make football decisions at this football club. Probably wasn't the best time in terms of there wasn't too much stability. That's that's the word, stability. We haven't got a coach at the moment. Who's you know, that, that's a big that's a big uh, big decision to make. First and foremost, you needed a coach that got everyone believing in something more than the next game and the next game. The Reds trained under their new coach for the first time this morning, shortly after he arrived from his native Spain. We want to build something in two years' time. For me, now thinking win or three or lose, it doesn't matter for me. The important is to play the way that we want to play. Massive credit to Michael Petrillo for finding and supporting and really taking a punt on, on Giuseppe Gombao. Because that guy there, he, he revolutionised the whole club. The style that we want to do is a, a style that uh, to try to keep the position of the ball and to play a, an attack football and a beautiful football. Here's a chance, Karuska! It's 1-0 for Adelaide, Marcelo Karuska! So when Josep arrived, one was better for me because he speaks Spanish. So he was very, very passionate and he showed that from day one. Gita, lovely turn! What a goal! But it's not just the people that saw the game, it's the players. The players are enjoying it. And this is important for a player. High intensity, everything with the ball, and nothing was done without reason. I think at the time, I think he brought in a very unique and specific footballing vision over that period that we had a very successful time. It's because everyone was on the same page. FFA Cup kicked off in 2014. There hadn't been a national cup competition, like a proper one for almost 20 years. It's just come out of the blocks at 100 miles an hour and the potential for this competition is enormous. We took it very seriously from, from day dot. I remember the day of the game thinking, wow, what an opportunity, like this is a big deal. The best, best memory I remember celebrating the goal. Kite slides it for Karuska, that's a gorgeous ball. Here's Thirio! There's the opening goal of the cup final! Sergio Thirio! And after the game, we all the players and the families inside the field. That was something that I keep in my mind forever. You know, when that final whistle went, I could have won the World Cup. And a first 
piece of silverware from Adelaide United since the Premiership in 2006 under John Cosmeter. He was probably a starting point of us trying to lift up, you know, the biggest trophy in the country for our games. By the end of today, one team's heartache will be over, one hard luck story will go on. But for whom will it be third time lucky? What was extra amazing about that season is Adelaide United started that season quite poorly. The bell not tolling just yet for Guillermo Amor. Adelaide remain on the foot of the ladder after seven matches now. It wasn't the easiest of starts. Translation-wise, I think, and, and language-wise, was a little bit difficult at the start. Guillermo was involved with us before, so we knew him. So we didn't understand why we couldn't win. We know that we are in a bad situation, but we know also that we have a very good squad and we can turn this situation. Ah, oh, he's a champion, you know, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. It just wasn't happening in those first seven or eight or nine games. I'm not sure what button we click. He looks for Kamal, trying to place it, and it's in! That from that point and from that moment, uh, we became uh, unbeatable. Breaks for Jitsa! You come here to play, uh, to play the game, it's for to enjoy, and, but to win. Enjoy the sport, but to win. Eh? This, this is the mentality. It's always a bit of chatter. It's a South Australian thing, you know, that are they going to choke again sort of thing. Pre the game, I just had a really good feeling that, hey, if we're all on point today, no team can beat us. Just seeing people in the stands as we were walking across going like, OK, this is different. What about the cross from Karuska? It was special from, from the start to the end. The most special game probably I play. And the first thing that came to my mind is, is the goal. It's going to be Isaias. Oh, Isaias, the Spaniard. Si, senor. Si. That day was, was electric, the atmosphere. It was the one thing you know, that was missing. And we're going to be champions. I think it means you know, to the individual, something different. Like, for me, it was like... There it is! Thanks to them all, they are bridesmaids no more! We achieved the one thing we wanted to achieve over a long period of time. With Craig Goodwin and his nephew, Josh, what a moment! To win at home in front of 50,000 fans, especially with this team, to me, it means so much more, you know? It's been an amazing season, and we've rounded it off in style. Well, my journey to play with Adelaide United didn't, didn't start out how I would have wanted it to. I wasn't able to make the youth team two years in a row. There's been a lot of Reds players and a lot of local players that will tell you that it's very different playing for Adelaide United than it is playing for another team. When the opportunity came up, I never looked at it as like, oh, I don't like Adelaide United anymore or anything like that. You know, I always obviously supported Adelaide United from a young age and just was accepting of the fact that I oh, was deemed not good enough at the time. What a great noise around Cooper Stadium and what a great contest in prospect for the fifth FFA Cup final. I'm also an Adelaide fan, so I was watching the final the year before when they played Sydney away. I wasn't at the club at the time, but when I came back, I'd carried resentment for that and the fact that we drew Sydney again in the final. This has been the scene of some great nights in the history of Australian football. And this is, I'm sure, going to be another one. Sydney were quite, I guess, the powerhouse at that time and expected to win. For me, it was like getting that little bit of revenge for the year before. It is Craig Goodwin! Oh, absolutely sensational goal! Yeah, it's a really memorable performance. Goodwin! Oh, my goodness! Adelaide United are the FFA Cup winners on a raucous and emotional night at Cooper Stadium. It was getting to the end of our regular season and we were doing quite well. We were in a position where we could make finals for the first time in club history. And so the club thought they will put us into Coopers and we were lucky enough to get 5,000 people at the game. They were the best crowd I've played in front of. They were active, they were screaming, they were yelling. I think we showed 
the world and South Australia and football that we can have crowds come and watch us and we can put on some good football. Back when I first signed, it was great for us to win a game. So the fact that we made it to the finals was just fantastic. Adelaide United looking to pounce early. Fiona Woods, hat trick! I remember it happening and then just thinking about the significance of it. The program has had a really kind of tough road. And so I think when we made finals, I was just really proud to have played a part in that. And, and I wanted it to be like a catalyst for like the next 10 years of the club, like the future. What a strike, and she's done it again, Chelsea Dorber. Chelsea Dorber and the age group of Charlie and Alex Chidiak or Matilda McLamara, all really great, great players. And they've kind of come into this a-League set up with a lot more support and you can kind of see that when they're invested in correctly, they, they can make it. Here's Chidiak who turns one way, then the other. We've got such potential in this state and I think we've got the culture there. And Charlie Grant has her first ever Matilda's goal. I think there can be another five or six Alex Chidiaks and Charlie Grants. This World Cup, we have two South Australians and, you know, we keep investing correctly, then maybe next World Cup, we've got 10 South Australians. Keeping humble and passionate, that is what the South Australian football is all about. And I've been told, you know, ah, you're going to go to the country where they don't feel soccer or they don't feel football. But I don't know, it was different. I never saw, never came across my mind like he played for Adelaide like I did. Two of my kids were born here. Bernardo was born in Rio, but he came here, he was very little as well. He was three and a half years old. We can say all three are very South Australian. And that's brilliant from Casio! Well, we've seen that shift back again. We're a very proud South Australian club. We want as many South Australians playing as possible. This club has such a strong culture and really is a very inclusive club. And they've been that way for 20 years. I'm so proud to be a part of a club that put their hand up and said, we're gonna host the first Pride game. That made me feel so special and welcome and a part of the family that we are here. The biggest strength of Adelaide United from day one has been its connection with local community. Not just because we've got young kids, homegrown kids playing, but they're ours. And when you're walking in the street, they're the people that ask the question, have you seen this Toure kid? Oh, he went near post, Ellis, and Toure! And the refugee from Guinea has just made himself a local hero. And we're one of the few clubs that are having an investment in youth football. I think that makes not just Australia people proud, but makes all of Australia proud. Driving into the box. We can't overlook the success of that first season of Adelaide United. The NSL was a dead duck. What was going to replace it? Well, what hope is there if, if most clubs in the country weren't really capturing the imagination of their population centres? Suddenly Adelaide United comes in. I knew there was a market for the game. It just had to be the right product and Adelaide United were the right product. It was a team for everybody. It's clearly to be seen as a force nationally, represent the South Australian community and aim to regain South Australia as the soccer capital of Australia. I was at the first game that Adelaide United had where Carl Viet scored. I think my dad's actually got a frame that he got signed by Carl and he's got the ticket to the game as well. Adelaide is special to me because it's my hometown club, but also for the fact that I've been able to share so many special moments on the pitch. Fires it into the roof of the Nets. Brilliant stuff by the Reds. I don't have one to share at all. This is for the people, by the people, for the people. I actually didn't think the Adelaide people would have this kind of passion in them, but you get this number here tonight, and this is, is pretty special. The intention behind what we did 20 years ago was to build a team for the people, and they still are the people's team.